I work here at the university as a technician in the film department. I moved out here from LA about two and a half years ago. I was working in the film industry for about 10 years. I was teaching, I was working, directing, editing, freelancing, you name it. Um, so as I graduated, which many of you are about to be doing, you kind of get to that point where you're like, all right, I want to make that big calling card project. And you get to the point where either your funds or your parents' funds or the school funds are depleted and you need to go out there and raise a little bit more for your projects. So that's basically what you can do here. Crowdfunding, um, you guys are all interested, you all came here, so you've maybe heard of it or, or you're kind of curious about it. But this is kind of something that's taken um, the world by storm in the past decade. And it's become the premier way for independent artists to get their projects funded. So you don't have to go to a distributor. You don't have to go and ask people for you know, investments. Kickstarter is not about investments. Uh, it's about donations. And what you do is you offer rewards and perks and, and gifts that people kind of get in exchange for their help. So it does take a little bit of uh, legwork and, and a bit of you know, crafting of your, of your own. Um, so I did this project equitism, which you just saw on a Kickstarter. It was, uh, it was a couple years ago now. And that's the teaser trailer. I'm still that's the teaser trailer for it. I'm still working on equitism. So it has expanded and evolved. We intended for it to be a feature film, and it's now started to shift into a series. So we're looking at trying to pitch it to Netflix um, and, and pick it up as, as something even larger than it once started as. So when I show you guys this, um, we were successful on Kickstarter in the sense that we, ra we we met our goal and we raised our funds, and we still have a commitment to our backers to fulfill this project equitism, which which I'm. Um, very, which is very important to me. Moving forward out here, I've started up a production company um, with some of you guys here tonight that will be taking part in it. It's called 0.51 Productions, and it's all about the 51% of the female movie-going audience out there. So the question that we wondered is, why aren't there more films by and for women? So this production company is aimed and geared at empowering women with equal opportunities. We're going to have greater than or equal to 50% women on our cast and crew. And... Um, I don't know how much you could glean about equitism, but it is a story about equality. So that's kind of the, the, the direction that we're moving in. Um, obviously, this kind of stuff that we're going to talk about tonight is applicable to any kind of project. It could be music, it could be acting, it could be painting, um, and even people that are designing things, like some of the most uh, funded crowdfunding projects are, you know, inventions. So, you know, those are the ones that, that really get a lot of money, but we're here more to talk about your passion projects. Okay. So let's get, let's get moving here. All right, so I, I put this picture up here. It's kind of startling, but I want you guys to be forewarned. This is what I used to look like back out in California. I was a different man back then. Um, same values, but a bit of a hippie, admittedly. Uh, so you'll see me in the video, don't be too shocked. Uh, so we raised uh, over 33,000 US dollars and we had 386 backers, okay? So that's 386 physical people that gave us something, anywhere from a dollar to ten thousand dollars, which was which is one of our executive producer backers. Um, that is the cap for Kickstarter. They don't allow you to give any more than that. That has to do with tax purposes because that's the largest amount that can be con considered a gift to someone. Anything more than that, and, and and it becomes an issue with the government. So, you saw the teaser trailer already. Um, Kickstarter. I'm going to talk a little bit about Kickstarter. Uh, about Indiegogo, and then the Kickstarter is what I have most information on. So really quickly, uh, has anyone ever done a crowdfunding campaign before? Okay, cool. I failed. That's okay. You're here. You're going to succeed now. Um, yeah, and just shout out, which, which uh, platforms did you do it on? Which platforms? It was Kickstarter. It was Kickstarter. It was, yeah. Okay, I got, a lot, I got a lot to offer you here tonight. Anybody else? What did you do it on? Yeah, Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Anybody else? Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Okay. I have found that Indiegogo is most popular on the student level, and there's a reason for that. No shame in it. This was my Indiegogo for my last student film, and I raised $1,000 out of a $5,000 flexible goal. So, yeah, you know, I raised one-fifth of my goal. Not bad. This is really cheesy. Look at how much time I put into this. I literally had three paragraphs and about five or six rewards. I think I threw this together in, in, one, in one sitting, right? That's okay, and I got $1,000. I think all the backers out of 12 were pretty much all close friends and family. So really, I could have just gone to them and asked for, you know, up front for their cash, probably, and then I wouldn't have had to pay the fee for this site. I wanted to be a little more professional. 
So Indiegogo is a great resource for you as students. Um, the biggest reason being that it allows you to do a flexible goal, which means that if you don't reach your target, you can still get most of the funds, you know? With Kickstarter, it's all or nothing. If you don't reach that goal, you're not gonna get any of it. So it's, 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 it's really a quite intense process. With, with Indiegogo, you can, cap, you can launch it and just kind of kick back and see what happens. I'm not saying that you can't, it doesn't require work too, but you don't have to be stressing that you know, all your work will be for nothing. However, if you do not reach your goal on Indiegogo, they charge you a 9% fee versus if you reach your goal, it's only like a 4% fee. So they, they kind of make a little bit more of, of your money. So it's still a good incentive for you to work hard on it. Okay, I'm not gonna dwell on this because I don't even have a video here. Um, it's just a really cheesy poster. Um, I'll be showing the short film that this crowd funded next week at the beginning of, uh, right before Pan's Labyrinth uh, here at Film Sock. And let me just also take this opportunity to really thank Film Society, Louis, uh, Luca here who's filming, Livon who's doing the popcorn tonight, all these guys. You guys are amazing. Thanks for having me and collaborating with me on this. It's really great to be here. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the... Uh... All right, so the thing I love about Kickstarter is that you can get all kinds of stats and stuff about your page. So just in contrast, here's the Kickstarter page that I did. And I hope this doesn't feel like it was thrown together in one sitting because in actuality, from research to launch, it took me about a year of prep because I didn't know anything about it. So a lot of that time was just spent researching and, and I'll go into the details on that. But um, I'll show you, a, we're not gonna watch the whole video, but I'll just give you a little taste of like the video that we put together. And we had this a little slightly more professional um, kind of uh, logo and everything. I don't even think, there we go sound. Just show you a little bit of it. Equitism splits men and women into black and white dichotomies. Dichotomies of a medieval time, a time when kings and queens ruled all. But as any chess player will tell you, it is the queen yeah, there it is. who you. holds the most power for changing the state of the game. This game, however, is not one of tiny wooden pieces. It's one of men and women dealing in steel and dealing to the death. At every conflict on this chessboard that is life. Relationships and equity. Okay, so we had some behind the scenes footage, we did some equity. stunt sampling, the green loss screen. The gain and material advantage. Not equality exactly. Because we're not exactly the same, but equity. Because we do deserve equal opportunities and respect. Come with us on a journey to explore gender roles, sexuality, and friendship. Splayed out in sword fights, strategy, and comedy. All shown through an elaborate chess game with moves and reinforced with communication. We want to tell a story that explains us to kings. So we've got pre-visualization samples. Our young characters are inducted into the concept of men and women. And the night before the real life chess game, there is a grand celebration known as Kesskesse. 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 These events are not unlike prom or acceptance into college. In this parallel world, we educate teens how to make responsible decisions about the importance of verbal consent. Equitism is just another ism with positive intent. We're not picky with our allies, just as long as someone stands by our side. So let's usher in a new age that's no longer black and white and... Shed light on all the colors of our modern day chess board for the next generation of men and women to come. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, who would win in this life-size chess game of men versus women? What you should really be asking is, why are we playing this game against one another in the first place? All right, so it's a little bit self-righteous and all that stuff, but you get the idea. We got our little logo there, and then at the end, we just uh, mentioned to people about the different rewards and like us on Facebook and all that good stuff. So there you go, there's the video. I spent a couple hundred just to make that video for location. We shot it on a red camera. Um, as I said, green screen. We had professional sound lighting, different chessboard props. Um, you know, it took a little bit of time to prepare. That's my whole crew. We did it all in one night. So I would really strongly suggest you get all of your team in there or as many people as you can to give your potential backers an idea of who you are, the face behind the project. Um, okay, then coming down here, I just explained a little bit more about the project. We, we mentioned the Hunger Games and stuff like that. And, you know, of, of course, it's a little bit of, of that vibe. Um, and then I've just got some photos here, a little more description. 
We had this fun chessboard that we were updating as the campaign went to fill in all the squares to get uh, to our goal. Talk about budget, talk about crew. Uh, this isn't anything special, but this is like the whole team of, of crew and supporters here. Um, we talk about the story because people want to find out about that. We've got little samples of the music. We had, a, we had an original soundtrack done. All the music you hear for Equitism is, is done by one guy. And um, to talk about the rewards. So we had a lot of unique rewards, but the, the staple reward was this pin that we made here. So uh, I designed this pin with a graphic artist and we sent it out and we had it produced. And we basically made hundreds of these pins and they were our $20 reward. So the $20 reward is kind of like usually one of the most popular. It's, it's, it's kind of a benchmark. So if you can offer a really good reward there, you're gonna get a pretty good response to your backers. And this pin actually can be worn in different ways to say different things about yourself. So you can display your sexual orientation, you can display your gender orientation, you can display what you're looking for in a relationship. So it's kind of an icebreaker and uh, it has some function to it as well. We're actually redoing these pins for our new campaign as well. Um, then we did some paintings. So for the painter in the house here tonight, we had this really talented uh, painter who did these uh, custom uh, paintings, the one you saw of me. And for $500, we offered a painting from her, which of course we reimbursed her for fairly. And we, we had five of those rewards and they all sold out. So 500, 500 bucks a painting, that's not bad. Um, we cleaned up on that. And then, yeah, just our wrists and challenges and a little bit of legal stuff. So there you go. Probably nobody read through all of that and we're not going to either. The rewards over here are tiered pretty, pretty basically. The one pound reward is crucial. As you can see, we had uh, a large number of backers for that one pound reward, 117. That makes a bigger impact than you think because nobody sees how much people donate. They just see that they're a backer. So you want to you wanna get those numbers up early and one, one dollar, one pound is an easy way to do it. And then as we go to 5, 10, 15, 20, you start to get little digital rewards and pieces of the music and the uh, anything digital basically uh, before we have to start mailing stuff out because when you do mail it out, you got to think about shipping and that's included in there as well. You got to think about the manufacturing of it and make sure that you're going to make a profit actually and it's not going to be too much work to handle so you can meet your deadlines. Um, and then we had an early bird reward, which is really useful for people that are coming in the first few days, something that's a really good deal. So we had two of these equitism pins for like a discounted price. And yeah, the list goes on and we get up to, we get up to some other rewards. You can kind of see 12 backers, six backers, five backers. Uh, and some of them aren't gonna, aren't gonna catch, but they will, uh, you'd be surprised. For $1,000, somebody, we partnered up with these women who make these custom chess boards. We made a custom equitism chess board and somebody bought it for $1,000. Um, and then what else? A couple more here. Just little invitations and offers and stuff like that. Um, and then we got, we got a $5,000 um, backer that was kind of just luck, if I can be honest. And, um, and I'll, but, but, the reason that we got that backer was because of the work that we did and then we were lucky that they donated. So I'll tell you how, how that happened. And then of course, uh, one, one $10,000 executive producer backer. Okay, so let's get away from the campaign here for a second and go back to the slides. Kickstarter has this really great tool on their website where you can look at all the stats. So when you're done, you can go to this dashboard and I can look at all the details. This is a really nice tool to analyze um, Okay, so all the stuff that you did, this is live during your project. I think this graph is, is quite uh, crucial. It just shows you kind of where we started out here. And this is how it's gonna look. It's a very steady progress. Don't expect to get too much. In the first few weeks, it's a lot of grinding. You know, you reach out to those uh, close friends and family. And then um, this big spike here was our $10,000 10, uh, backer. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that because one thing that we did was we had the safety net of knowing that that was going to happen. We had an assurance from this investor that we we're gonna get that 10,000. So we basically negotiated a time where they would put that, that would give us a big push and momentum. And of course your backers aren't gonna know that you had that arranged. So that's just kind of a smart way to kind of keep your ace up your sleeve and pull it out when you need it. Um, because right now, if you follow this progression, it doesn't look like we're going to be successful. But what, what we did was we dropped this at a, at a point where 
it took us to the exact point of days where we were halfway, pretty much halfway funded and we were halfway there. And it was like, hey guys, we're, we're halfway there. We're, we're doing great. Um, and then the rest was just these small little blips. And as you can see at the end, these were the ones that were just a little bit fortunate that, I, that nobody could have foreseen. And that's what helped us get to the end. Okay, over here you can see you can see exactly where all of the uh, bids came from. Most of them are external people um, from sites, you know, searching Facebook. We, we, we put out some Facebook ads, which seemed to, to do all right and get us over 2000 almost $3,000. Um, and then it goes on and on. We, we, uh, we had some actors who were generous enough to donate as well and things like that. So you can see every little thing on there tells you about how many plays your video got, tells you about the reward popularity. Of course, one, uh, the one pound reward, one dollar reward is really big. And then again, the $20 reward, which I mentioned. And then down here, it literally shows you every single bit of action, anything that ever happened from pledges to adjustments to comments. And you, can just, you could just go by beat by beat and monitor your campaign if you ever wanted to go back and trace it um, to the source. Okay, and then, yeah, let's keep moving here. I want to get into the meat of this thing. All right, guys, so don't worry about the buzzwords. Maybe some of you will hear about like most funded projects, most raised on the first day, fastest projects to reach a million, and the most backed projects. Like I said, those are the kind of underkins, the people that are making these new inventions, and they have a whole you know, factory behind them to just churn stuff out. That's not really what we're here to do. Um, I mean, it's great if you guys want to raise over a million, um, but I can't help you get there. What I can help you do is get into a very nice range that most Kickstarter uh, projects are successful at. So let's talk a little bit about that. Inspiring statistics, guys. I just updated this today. Um, you've got almost whew, like 3.5 billion raised on Kickstarter, um, over 138,000 successfully funded projects, and a good 77K uh, raised in the 1K to 10K range, which is the largest group. So if you look down here at the bottom, these categories are important to take note of. If you look, as I mentioned, this is the biggest range where people are successful. So 1,000 to 10,000, which is most likely what you guys will be doing with your student projects, or even if you're just uh, recently graduated, that's a, that's a, a, a smart place to go because you're gonna have a higher chance of being successful. Um, we went for 32K because as I mentioned, we knew we had one um, $10,000 backer, which basically made it 22K. And then we just had a, we worked for a year, we had a good team and we wanted a bit of a challenge. Uh, if you go for less than a thousand, you know, I think you can really have an assurance that you'll do it. Um, the project that we're about to launch now for 0.51 Productions, tomorrow night actually, is uh, 15,000 15, uh, pounds. So we're going a little higher, but not quite into that next uh, band. Um, but that's what I recommend for you guys starting out is the, is the one to 10K range. Now a couple of sobering statistics. I uh, hate to, to burst the bubble here, but Kickstarter is all or nothing, you know that. There's only uh, about a 36% overall success rate, but keep in mind, 14% of the projects finish with not a single pledge which kind of tells you something. Maybe they really didn't put any work into it. Or, you know, if you don't have a single pledge, that means you just hit go and you walked away. So that's 14% you can write off. And then this is a silver lining because 78% of the projects that raise over 20% go on to be successfully funded. So if you can hit that 20% mark, that's going to be a huge incentive uh, for everyone else to see that you're on, in the right direction and that you're going to be successful. Down here, um, we don't have to talk about the unsuccessfully funded ones, but as you can see, uh, disregarding 0% from 1 to 20, it's like huge, and then it's a sliding scale. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. When you get to 80 plus, it's very unlikely you're not going to make it because there's, there's a momentum and there's people behind you. And I'll go on Kickstarter and I'll see someone that's really close and I'll say, oh man, let me just give a little bit because, you know, they got to make it. They've come this far. So you, you'd be surprised. you get pledges from people you didn't even, you know, you didn't even know. Okay, so remember guys, I spent a year preparing for this Kickstarter and I'm trying to cram that whole year of knowledge into this one session. 
But if you still want to do further research, I'm going to talk a little bit more um, on what you can do. So don't worry if you haven't got it figured out, like you're going to learn a lot along the way and uh, make your video special. Don't rush it and listen to your team. Uh, so I'm going to explain uh, quite embarrassingly what I mean by listening to your team and not rushing it by showing a few of the attempts that I did. So again, take this all with, uh, with, with a pinch of salt, guys, because, you know, it's not like I love showing this to people, but I want you to see the Kickstarter warts and all, and I think it will help you learn from, from my mistakes. So get this, before I called it equitism, I thought I was gonna, you know, call it meninism and be all, you know, oh, it's kind of like feminism, but it's different. But uh, I kind of learned that wasn't the right way to go. It wasn't, it wasn't sounding good, it was getting a bad rap. So equitism, uh, meninism turned into equitism, because I got a great suggestion from one of my female mentors that uh, equity is a great way to, to kind of push the project. This was the first video I did, and this is when I was kind of like, just really chomping at the bit. I just wanted to launch it. Some of you guys are like this. I see students, they're just like, my team's not helping me. I'm just gonna shoot a little webcam video and I'm just gonna go and, and launch it. I would urge you not to do that, and here's why. Greetings. My name is Way to Be, and I'm here to tell you about my film Meninism. Meninism is men respecting women. All right, great. Feminism is all about equality and respect. I'm improv in this, guys. I don't have a script. I like to create a I'm standing in front of a school. Right along with it. Uh, you know, it this is a GoPro. A I shot this on a GoPro. Now, where's that it's jump cutty. There's no B roll. I think I do put in a little bit of. Literally, I'm just spitballing this. And look at the look at the quality of some of this uh, content. This was a costume designer who did a sketch. It's not really great. Who's gonna fund this thing? Okay, so that picture was all right. And then to top it off, like at the end of the video, there's like a car that drives right up, almost running me over. Okay, so that was I, I like I said, I threw that together in uh, in a day. Um, but that is not, not even as close to as embarrassing as the next video I'm going to show you. So, <laughs> so anyway, that was like, at least that wasn't um, too weird or anything. It was just a, just a guy kind of speaking his piece. Um, but this video was me in my flat in LA, just alone one night, turned on all the party lights I had, put on this elaborate outfit, and, and started acting like a character with this idea that it's just gonna go viral, you know? Everyone's gonna love it. They're just gonna, it's gonna be so weird and different. Um, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna watch all of it, but I, I will, I will uh, open up the, um, whoops, I will open up the, the vault and let you guys have a peek at this, uh, just for your own, for your own good. Shit. Sorry, that's not it. Sorry right, guys. That's actually a film that I'm quite proud of, but that's not the that's not the embarrassing clip. Okay, I warned you guys. Greetings, I am the Count of Melanismo. Or, in some circles, a way to be. Or, Chansky. I can't remember. But in any event, I've been brought here to teach you a little secret. Okay, great. Yeah. About Let's hear about that secret. Towards the opposite sex. Yeah. You see. All right, I'm not even gonna. I'm, it's too much, guys. I'll, I'll scrub through it here. <laughs> Okay, it's just, just me, you know, and, uh, you know, I just walk around the house, and, uh, you know, I've got this, like, confidential files book, and I talk, I do a little bit of a shot of this, uh, where is it? There's, like, a chessboard in it at one point. Yeah, there's a chessboard. Where is that thing? There it is, right? And then, it just goes on, yeah. It's, it's quite a hot mess, right? And I come here and it's just 
falling down and all right, woo, right? Wow, I can't believe I actually thought I was gonna share that with the world. And, and, I, and I shared it with you guys here, but it doesn't leave this room, I hope. Um, okay, so I was all fired up and I, and I had a little bit of a crew and I was even more desperate to get this thing launched because I was just so ready. And I said this to my crew and I was like, I'm gonna release this, guys. I'm releasing it tonight. Hope you guys like it. And, uh, and I got this very urgent email uh, from one of my female team members. I'll read it to you guys a little bit. Mr. Wade, I want to stay professional about this film, but since the video you have just put onto our channel was clearly not of that nature in any way, I suppose I can exempt myself from that standard to say the following. Be warned, this will hurt. There is no sugar coating here. In fact, there's lots of hot sauce coating instead. I am mad, very, very mad. This is a trailer? It's you standing on a metaphoric soapbox in a Dracula cape preaching about how we all have to open up our metaphorical confidential files. When people watch this, they will think you're an insane hermit. That's what really stuck with me, the hermit line. And I, and I was like really offended. I was like, hermit? Where'd she get that from? I'm not kidding. They will laugh at you. For starters, you never actually said that you were making a movie. I didn't. You never said that you want to help educate the world about the genders. You just preach your personal ideals. For the first half of the promo, like a crazy missionary. Seriously, they might think Mennonism is a religion and you invented it and you never actually told the audience your motive, saying all these things in your video. They don't know what you're making. Uh, they don't know you're teaching the next generation. All they see is talking uh, and opening up confidential files. And uh, then you expect them to know what you're talking about. What's the movement? Donate, even if it's just a dollar. Donate to what? This crazy guy's missionary trip? A convention? Books to educate the masses? They don't know. So why would they donate? I could go on for several paragraphs, and she does mention Hermit again there, which stings. But then she says, okay, I'm done. I think we need to make a better video. I've taken it off public so nobody can see this. And uh, let me know when you're ready to do some real work. So I was, I was pretty furious, um, as you can imagine. I thought it was the best video ever. But anyway, it took the night to cool down, showed it to some of my family, got the exact same feedback. And then I started thinking, you know, maybe she's right. <laughs> so listen to your team, guys. It's, it's so important. Just don't have a tunnel vision um, because otherwise you might end up with something like that. All right, let's move on. You've seen the final video, a little bit of that. Um, and I think that was at least professional enough. It's still a little bit quirky and weird. Okay, this is the thing. These are the kind of things to start jotting down notes on. We're getting to that point in the meeting. It's just bullet points. But if you want to take it further, this is what I did um, and I learned in my year's time. Read up on your blogs. And that's as simple as just like Googling in how to be successful on Kickstarter, right? That's no secret. But there's a bunch of blogs out there with very specific different things that you can go to. Review similar projects. So go to the Kickstarter site and go to the tab that has films or music or whatever department you're actually making a project in. Look at the projects that are similar to yours with the same price range and look at what they're doing, right? And learn from them. Workshop working titles. I think the title's kind of important. Um, it's what draws people in. Obviously, Mennonism was a mistake as well. So find something that is uh, positive and people will respond well to. Get a few bad apples out of the way. You already saw that. Don't worry, just ex expect that. Don't think the first thing you do is gonna be gold. Plan to avoid periods when people give less. Okay, so don't start your Kickstarter on you know, Christmas Day. Everyone's like, I just gave all my money to gifts and family. I, don't, I have no more money for you, right? Don't do that. Um, and I'll show you a graph later that gives you an idea of the months that are better to do Kickstarters. Um, same thing with you guys as students. At the beginning of the semester, you have some cash, right? But what happens at the end of the semester? You're broke. So don't, don't launch Kickstarter at the end of the semester. Um, okay, plan your, uh, plan your campaign with international events. So equitism was all about women and equality. We had some big events going on on my campus that I used in my updates and shared and we went to and we promoted. One of those was, was International Women's Day. There was a clothesline event. There was Take Back the Night. Um, there, we did an Oscars party. All these kind of things that you can tie in. And uh, we had this really ironic thing where three of us were all uh, um, Aries birthdays. So we did like a birthday post for, for Aries. We, did, um, we hit our goal on the equinox and our composer had composed a piece called Equinox. That was like the planets were aligning or something. So we, we did a post on that. Get creative. You don't just want to do an update that's like, hey guys, everything's going good since you last heard from us. Thanks for the donation. You know, every, every update should have something new to share with your audience. So, so they can see that it's, it's an organism that's growing. Um, call on the grammar Nazis. 
and this is something before you launch, just have everybody and their grandmother review your site so that you'll, they'll see things that you never caught. And they'll be like, look, it's great and all, but what is it? Oh, I should have had just one sentence at the very beginning that just says exactly what it is for grandma who didn't watch the video or just was way over her head, right? Or, 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 or whoever. Um, get good looking samples. I showed one of those clips. Don't get these little, you know, thrown together sketches because it looks very amateur. It's, it has to be professional. And I'll show you our Kickstarter now. We've got some really talented students that put together these great assets that make it look custom made. Um, and that helps people to visualize your, your vision. Spend money to make money. I probably spent a couple thousand money uh, up front to get advertisement done, to get some extra team members, to get extra videos, to get stunts in the studio. All that stuff was an investment so that people could see what we want to do. If you don't spend a dime and you just are hoping they'll imagine it, they probably won't. So make sure you have a little bit of, of funding up front and, and be prepared to, to put that towards it. Uh, treat it like a marathon, not a sprint. This is so important, guys. It is not, uh, you know, like first day, I'm just running like crazy to get as much as I can um, because you'll burn out after a few days. Pace yourself. You know, it is good to get a lot of backers early on, but then towards the middle, you're going to have a long drought. That's just how it goes. In the middle, it gets really slow and you have to have that stamina to just keep doing little things and keep progressing and don't ever fall flat and just say, ah, we're not going to make it. Let's just give up because you'll have some tough days. I promise you that. Um, have a good support system for those tough days. So there were times when I'd like call up one of my, you know, best, some of my best friends, my family, um, my, you know, anybody that's there that can listen to you to just say, look, I just had a really bad day. I'll show you guys on the campaign. We had one backer uh, who gave us a thousand pounds. He was a so-called producer, thousand dollars. And then a week later he withdrew his, his contribution. So there's a part where like a thousand dollars just disappears. And so that was really rough because it kind of feels like you're kind of a phony, you know, you, why did you, why did you give it the Indian giver, give it and take it back? Like that didn't, that didn't help us. It actually made us, made us look bad. So be ready for those tough times. Um, if at all possible, have a safety net in place. And that's what I was talking about. Have some backup funding. Look, if you guys get 80% of the way there and you need another thousand to, to get you over the hump and it's, you know, five minutes to go, don't just sit there crossing your fingers. Beg your parents or, or someone that you know to put up that thousand and look, I'll pay you back, I promise. Get over the mark because once the money's in the bank and, it's, and you've passed the finish line, you can breathe. But if you did all that work and you're just a little short and you didn't think ahead of having a backup plan, all that work will kind of be for nothing in a sense. And, and I wouldn't want you guys to do that. I know, I know it happens um, sometimes. Uh, find relatable popular cultural references. So right now in the media, uh, you know, back in America and Hollywood, like the Me Too movement and the Time's Up initiative and the whole Weinstein scandal, all that stuff is very relevant to what we're doing with 0.51 Productions. So, you know, we're not trying to market on that, but we are, we're trying to be aware of it because we want to change the, the culture, the working culture in, in the film industry out here in, in, um, in the UK as well as in the US. Uh, schedule, schedule things in advance to stay busy. So you don't want to hit go and all that pre-production, all that work, and you're just, okay, now what do I do? And just kind of twiddling your thumbs. You want to have events you're going to, launching things, um, meeting people, networking, stuff like that. Line up your best friends or, or some people that you trust to do the launch with you, and that way you get a few, few backers early and a few donations. Have material in the can, which basically means like film some of your stuff and don't use it right away. And then... One, one dry night when, uh, or one rainy night, you can just throw it up like, oh, we just shot this. So uh, do you guys, for instance, do you guys know the actor uh, Shia LaBeouf by any chance? Anybody? Shia LaBeouf, you guys know him? I'll tell you a little story. So I was out in LA. You know how he's kind of a strange guy. He was doing an art gallery where you could just come and see him for a whole week. He was sitting in a room and you could come and meet him basically and do anything you wanted. Um, so I went and I waited in line for about, 36 hours and like camped out there with a sleeping bag, got in line to see Shia LaBeouf. So, and obviously had a pretty transcendental experience with him, gave him one of our pins, it's holding the guy's hands, eye to eye. We had a moment, but I don't want to bore you with that. The point is, 
Up until that point, I was passing out those equitism pins to everybody in line. I was taking photos. I was getting to know them. And then I had this whole stock of equitism pin photos that I gave to my PR team. And throughout the campaign, they would just pepper them on the social media. And it would seem like, oh, they were saying stuff like, oh, equitism pin sighting on Broadway Street, equitism pin in, in, uh, on Mulholland Drive. You know, they were, they were kind of pretending that these were random people that had the pin at different days. And you know what, guys? You got you to gotta get away with some things like that because your audience is looking to see how, how alive this project is. So there's no shame in that. Um, yeah, and then book your schedule solid for a month or two months or however long you're going because you're gonna be, it's a full-time job. It's not a lottery, that's the last thing I'll say. It's pure hard work. You know, it's not just hoping for the best. It's, it's the work that'll get you there. Different phases really quick. Explosive start, like I mentioned, you've, you've done a lot of work to get there. Patient marathon pace, and then a breakneck sprint to the finish line to get you there. I think we reached our goal just a day or so before our, uh, our campaign started. Okay, close friends and family. In the middle, you hope to get some big fish. Um, or, that, or that safety net. And then at the end, it comes down to absolute strangers and absolute lifesavers. Um, get ready to exhaust everybody on your contact list. You gotta be a little bit shameless and you're gonna get some like stressful messages back. It's tough, because I'm a sensitive guy, but I was shameless and I, I mass texted everybody and you're gonna get those texts back that are like, don't ever contact me again, you horrible person. And you're just like, I'm so sorry. But, but you know, once you do it, you get out of your system, you're like, all right, I'm not going to contact them again. But then you also get someone back who will say, oh, hey, I haven't heard from you. How you been? Well, I'll check it out. You know, and they're just from five years ago and you had them in your phone. So go for it. Okay, holding events while your project is active. I talked a little bit about this. So one of the innovative things we did is we held auditions while we were active, while we were live. It kept us busy. And so... Um, we had our story, we had all our thing, the Kickstarter page. People were coming into Audition for Equitism. All those people are the people that you see in the teaser trailer. And of course we would say to them, because we didn't want it to get unethical, we would say, we don't, we don't need you guys to donate, but we just want to let you know that if we, if we don't reach our funding goal, we, we, we're not going to be able to make this film. So please spread the word, you know, share our message. And a lot of actors would, would pass along the message. Some of them felt, felt uh, like they wanted to donate. Nobody was donating for a role or anything like that. But I, I want to show you like one person who falls into the lifesaver category. Um, whoops. Actually, maybe I'll have to. Oh, I think I know why. Okay, so the, the rouse here. So let me come over to our backer report here. So this is another thing you can look at on Kickstarter. You can see all the backers that ever backed you. And I'm going to put in Rao. Okay, so this was this amazing actress. Her name was uh, Naomi, Naomi Rao. She didn't have to donate anything, and she was already cast before we even before she even left the, left the room. That's how good she was. But she really loved the project. She was really uh, a believer in it. And her mother, Alyssa, put twenty dollars in after the donation. And that was all great. And we, we you know she kind of we didn't hear from her for a while, but she wanted to get even more involved in the project. So as we were going. Um, she put in a donation of 525 pounds because she really believed in this. And then towards the end, her father, out of nowhere, with no provocation, came and put five, $5,000. And again, this wasn't us like asking her for help or anything. She believed in our project and she helped us champion this thing. So uh, you could say this falls a bit into the luck category. Um, and we were very thankful and lucky um, that, that her family belie believed in the project. Um, okay. Over here, low budget filming. So you don't have much money to spend, that's why you're crowdfunding in the first place. But you can do little things that give people teases, uh, little sample edits, and this will help people to get a better idea of what you're trying to do. So if you remember I was talking about having stuff in the can. So this sword fight, you might recognize some of this from the, the first video you saw in the background, right? This was actually that same sword fight, we just didn't use all the footage. So halfway through the campaign, we released this and we said, you know, we just shot this sword fight, but we had already done it. Um, but it was really good. And actually, I'll let you guys check it out. It's really simple, but, uh-oh. Doesn't seem to want to go into full screen. So I'll just, uh, 
I'll just give you a little, a little sample of it. It's nothing too special, very low budget. No special effects, you know, you can see the roof, uh, obviously the stunt choreography isn't that great. We use some GoPros, it's just kind of fun. And uh, there you go. That was put together by our editor. He did that in a matter of minutes. And so then later, just after that update is released, we have this uh, donation come in. Okay, so Lee Phillips was our editor's mother and she gave 500, which was already enough, huge. But then after that video came out, our editor's father came on and said, I totally see what you're trying to do here. I can see how that would be an epic sword fight. Here's 5,000, right? Okay, so those are the blips that you see at the end that get us there. And that's kind of what you're aiming for. That only happens generally at the end, when you've really proven that this is going to happen um, and, and people, or people are really starting to believe. Okay, and then we did a launch and a landing party and everything in between. There's a website called launchrock.com, which you can just start getting hype for your Kickstarter or your crowdfunding. Just get people's emails and they'll be notified when you launch. Uh, we did like a really cheesy party where I just got a cooler full of beer and I printed out some stickers of the pins and I brought some Sharpies and I said, hey, come over to my friend's house. And they hosted, there was a little bit of music and I gave everybody the pin with a sticker and we just wrote it on with Sharpies and everybody drank beer and I got some interviews and uh, it was really low key, but had a couple dozen backers from that night and some really good uh, connections. So that's really simple, but we're trying to actually do something even a little bit higher end for our uh, 0.51 Productions Kickstarter. Tomorrow night, we are gonna be at the Undercroft and we're having a launch party. We are gonna literally launch our Kickstarter campaign at 10 p.m. in the Undercroft. Uh, doors open at six. Um, the first 51 guests will get a free shot. And then at 10 o'clock, we're getting, giving a free shot to everyone in the house as well. And there'll be, there's gonna be barbecue. I'm gonna be cooking up on the grill. I'm from Texas, you know it's gonna be good. I've done two already before here. Uh, and then we're gonna have some beer pong and some other fun stuff like that and a live DJ. So we're trying to go a little bit higher up than the last time we did it. You guys are all welcome to attend if you wanna check that out. Um, and then at the end of our Kickstarter, on the last day of the campaign, let's say that we're a little bit shy of our goal, we're gonna have an even bigger event in Central and for that we've got a whole events team. We're trying to reach out to external guests and get some minor celebrities and some speakers and have some fun entertainment and stuff like that. I think we've got a guy who's got like pyrotechnics, who knows, maybe fireworks, I don't know. I'll we'll let the cat out of the bag here. So think about that kind of stuff. And then I told you guys about these events too and the Oscars party. Um, and we actually had that $10,000 $10, uh, backer uh, give us that reward at the Oscars, night of the Oscars, everybody's excited, it's a big hype. We did a little video, you don't need to turn the lights down for this, it's just a little thank you, um, just kind of saying. <laughs> Okay, that's really easy, and it's it's easier than you you know than you think. Just pull out your phone at a big event uh, when when those kind of moments happen. Right now, Facebook Live is on. If you guys are watching on there, thanks for tuning in. Um, and do those kind of little bit of updates. People will will feel more engaged. You know, they'll feel like they're actually with you, even if they're not at that Oscars party. Um, okay, so we're almost done, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. What I'm about to reveal to you now is the single biggest tip that I have to give you for making your crowdfunding successful. So really pay attention to this. Cross promotion, all right? Does anybody know what cross promotion is? All right, here's how it goes. 
there's a whole nother universe of other people out there who have their own ideas, believe it or not, who want to crowdfund their own things. And you might think, oh, well, they could care less. They, or they couldn't care less. They've, they've got their own projects and they don't, they don't want to work together. But actually, they're just like you guys. They have the same dreams and hopes and they are struggling too. And very few people have a walk in the park and have rich uncles that can just give them the money. So if you reach out while your campaign is live and you say, hey, just by sending a message on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, hey, look, I'm uh, launching this campaign. It's about this and this. I think we have similar values. What do you say we mention each other in our update and we share the backer love? And uh, you'd be surprised. So I'll show you uh, a, couple of, um, a couple of ways that this worked here. So start off with some of the kind of basic ones. So I had this, uh, and the nice thing about this is you actually can copy and paste. I had this one message that I would just copy and paste, and I would just, obviously I would put in the name of the person. Okay, so dear Callan, I'm working on a feature from Glycotism about equal opportunity and respect for all. I've heard it can be helpful to team up with other like-minded projects in this blog. Um, if we agree to have a brief mention of each other in our projects and upcoming update, we can share some back our love. And then I just put my link. Please consider and let me know your thoughts. Um, we want to reach our goals. This is a nice way to help one another. Okay, so he reaches out. Thanks for reaching out. I like this. I would love to do some sort of cross promotion. I do think audience would be a good fit. All right, really simple, right? We just had a little bit of a chat here and then we ended up putting each other in our, in our, uh, in our rewards. Okay, this guy, oh boy, whoops. Sorry, I'm revealing another one of the trade secrets. We'll get to that. Okay. This guy said, cool, uh, hello, way to be. Thanks for your interest in our project. It looks like a great upcoming movie. Um, we'd love to share about your project. Unfortunately, we have to wait a bit. Our next three updates have been tagged by other Kickstarter projects who have agreed on cost promoting with us. Okay. So obviously this is something that's, that's catching on. However, we can arrange to, sh to share about each other in a comment instead of an update. So that's really good too. Someone can post a good comment, um, positive comment on your site. So it doesn't have to be all about just cross promotion. All right, I'm getting to the good stuff now. So stick with me. So this person, I think the, the really noteworthy thing here, absolutely sign us up and just look at, um, look at this person's background. They've backed a uh, thousand, almost 1,300 projects. So that means they are super active in the Kickstarter community. When they share something about your project, it reaches 1,300 other projects and their projects backers. So it's really all about that mycelium network of tapping in to as many six degrees of separation as you can. Um, so even though we, we probably didn't get a donation from him himself, that network is even more important. Okay, dang it, why does that keep happening? Getting too eager here. All right, the ideal here. Let's take a look at the ideal. So we talked to these uh, two doctors, Lucy Brown and Helen Fisher, told them about our project. Way to be, what a great project. I just pledged $100. What? I sent you a message asking for cross promotion and you just decided to give me $100. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Do the cross promotion. You'd be amazed at what'll happen. Um, tweeted the project and I will mention it in my next update. It's all beautifully presented. I hope you get fully funded. And I said, wow, just wow. So there you go, guys. It's almost like if you're doing the work, good things will happen, you know? And it can become a bit, uh, a bit mindless at times when you're like, you're just sending out these, you know, I would send out hundreds of cross promotion things a week and you're kind of just like copy paste, copy paste, just churning, churning away, trying to make it personal. But, uh, but when you get something like that, hundred pounds is worth, worth hundred send offs. Proof's in the pudding here. Check this guy out, Rivik. Rivik, you rock. Thanks so much for your generous contribution, I say. Um, he decided to give us uh, 37. He says, way to be. I'm a backer of She Makes Comics. They recently gave you a plug and I found out through that. So this is somebody who came directly from another project's update about us and he clicked on it and decided to give 37 uh, bucks because he liked the reward and stuff. So there you go. And I said, oh, that's great too. It's great to have everybody working together. So. If you need any more proof than that, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I think these are a little bit more, less exciting and we're getting late. So I'm going to go right into 
Uh, proceed at your own risk. This is just a warning. It's kind of a cautionary note here. You're going to get a lot of messages like this. Hi, Kickstarter used an algorithm to rank a uh, campaign in featured sections. Blah, blah, blah. I offer this service for just $5. I'll contribute a dollar to your campaign. I'll leave a positive comment. I'll share on Facebook and Twitter for just $5. You're going to hear these things and they're going to sound good and enticing. And I'm going to be honest with you, nine times out of 10, it's not worth your money. It's better for you to just do your own work. Uh, because these guys, you know, they just, they just mass email people these little scams too. And actually, I, I made the mistake of investing $50 in this big guy who said, I have access to like 500 blogs and I'm going to post it on everyone. It's just $50, $50. I gave him $50. I didn't see anything come from it. And what frustrates me is they put us on their website as like a testimonial. And it's kind of funny because I get my revenge. People will email me. Hey, I saw you on this website. How's their service? And I just tear them apart. I say, these guys are liars. Don't use their service. So if they want to keep me on there, by all means, that's fine. Because um, I learned my lesson. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Just focus on your own hard work. Okay. So let's keep moving here. Hundreds of backers in the first 24 hours. Do we have any Kickstarter runners in the house here tonight that are doing any on Thursday or Friday? Yes? Cool, man. Good to see you back there. All right. So this is kind of fun, guys. I'm going to tell you how this works. It may not seem uh, like you're gonna earn anything from this because what I did was I went around with $1 bills in the US and out here to be one pound notes on the first day of my campaign and I just would go up to a person and say, can you put this dollar into my Kickstarter? And I'll be like, okay, like sure, take the dollar. And I'll be like, here's the website, you know, and they, they click it in, they donate a dollar. So they didn't lose anything there and basically, you're getting a free backer. So you might want to invest 50, 100, maybe even a couple hundred, which we're planning to do, on getting these early backers for just one pound. You won't get their money, because it's your money, but you'll get them as a backer. And then they'll start following your progress. And you will show up as having hundreds of backers in the first few days, which will actually make your popularity algorithm on, on Kickstarter rise to the top, which means everybody's gonna start looking at your project. So it's almost, an investment for more people to come and look. And the best part is, some people will be like, oh, you know what, you're here, you're doing this thing, just keep your dollar, I'll give you a dollar. Some people will be like, here's five, you know? And it pays, it pays itself off. Um, this is something you guys can do easily here around campus, around libraries, wherever people have computers, because you can even say, hey, I'm from this campus, I'm making a movie, I'm making a, a painting, I'm making a video. Uh, can you help fund us? Here's a dollar. And they'll be happy to do it. Here's a pound. So that's a really good tip. And we're going to actually put that to the test out here. So I'll talk to you a little bit later about that, my friend. Good to have you. Okay. The importance of advertisement and social media presence. So this is Slice of PR. It was a startup PR company. I know we have someone in marketing here tonight. This is, this was a absolutely essential to our success. So they've actually, this site has been updated since I last looked at it. It's super professional. And, um, I'm hoping that they still deemed us worthy of their uh, testimonials. Um, they, they might have surpassed. We used to, they used to have us on here as a testimonial. Oh, maybe it's on here. Oh my gosh, I think they've gotten too big for me. There it is, yes, okay. So, for anyway, Director of Ectrism. Uh, and this is just me praising their work because they did all of our social marketing. We gave them some money. They went on Facebook. They did Facebook ads. They did some Google ads. Um, and they just kept our social media presence alive and thriving. And now they're doing really well. And we offered them as an incentive, an extra, on top of what we already paid them, an extra 1% of our total earnings. So the more we earned, the more they would get as well. So it's just like an extra bonus of a couple hundred dollars at the end there. Um, at the end of the campaign, which is nice cherry on top when we were successful. Okay, uh, you know you're on track if people start taking up your campaign. So these are just some links to, to people that were on our project that were just tweeting us, Facebook shouting us out, like it was their own project, you know, like you have, to, you have to donate to this project. And it wasn't even their own. And that's when you know you have really put in the hard work. And today, um, our 0.51 Productions got a random shout out. And I, and I said to our uh, social media producer that she's doing a great job because that's, that's, the, that's really the proof right there. 
Okay guys, we're just about done here. Make sure at the end of your campaign, successful or not, that you thank everybody for helping out, all right? So I'll just show you right here. Um, this is like one of the final posts that we did. Congratulations. And I said this is gonna be a doozy because I go through and I literally say thank you to everybody. And yes, of course, my grandma too. And the friends, new cast and crew members. This whole thing is thank yous. This was some of my friends that, uh, that, that were the first donors. And then this was just me at the end showing that we were successful. And yeah, that's all just thank yous. And that probably took me a couple hours to write. So don't forget to do that because if you make it to the end and you're like, see you suckers, I made it. Everyone's gonna really think you're a jerk. Um, okay, I'm also gonna show you guys one other hard time that I could easily not share with you. But I want you to know that it's not all uh, sunshine and rainbows you are gonna have some creative differences that come up. So I'm gonna tell you a little story about an actress who was working on our project um, and she was very passionate about the project to the point where she wanted to become a producer. It was a little bit risky, but we, you know, we needed help and we were hoping that she had good intentions. So she became a producer on, on this project Equitism and within the first day of shooting, she was trying to take over the project and uh, this project was about equality and working together and I found myself male director on the shoot at the end of the first day and everybody's celebrating great first day you know having to open up a drink and she comes up to me with it with the other female producer and she says Brandon what are you doing like you you why did you order food for everybody here today and I was like I'm sorry wait what why did I order food uh, there was no food we everyone needed lunch she's like that's not your job that's, that's, that's the first AD job. I'm like, well, we didn't have the first AD today. It wasn't, nobody covered it and I wasn't gonna let everybody go hungry kind of thing. Um, so that was just like the starting point and then she just kind of let me have it um, about how I was running a horrible set and I wasn't doing a good job leading and, uh, and I found myself in this really awkward situation where she was like yelling at me and I thought to myself, what am I gonna do here? Um, this, is, uh, you know, this is a film about equality and it's a film about respecting women. So I didn't want to yell back at her and I also didn't want to say, you know, something outrageous like, you know, you're fired or anything like that. Uh, so honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to level with you guys. I'm going to be honest. Like I cracked under the pressure and I broke down and I started crying like right in front of her and, and this other producer. And luckily my, uh, my cinematographer was there, gave me a big old hug. He's this like Viking guy. Just, we hugged it out. Um, but unfortunately from that point on, she had the project under her thumb and she was calling the shots to the point where, no pun intended, she would say, we're done shooting this scene, it's my scene now. And, uh, and it was very tough to work with and to get that, that teaser trailer put together. I had to do a lot of compromising because I had a personal friend on the project who was an actor in that video who she basically said, you know what, he's not good enough, get him out of here. And I said, this guy's been working with me my whole life. I'm not, I'm not gonna lose him, he's my friend. And she said, you know, he needs to go. And basically the only, the only reason that, um, that I stuck with it was to fight to keep him on the project. And I don't leave people behind. You know, everybody has their own personal integrity and their values, but when I start something with people, I don't walk away from them, you know? Sometimes people walk away from me, that's okay. But I stick with my team. Um, so this whole thing ended with her and some of the other producers putting a contract in front of me and some of you guys may have heard of this scenario. It was the sell your soul moment. It was, we have a production company. Give us the rights to your film. Take yourself off as director. Give us 100% rights and we'll make this film for you. And I was sitting there with my crew of, of loyal people all at this long table. And there was some discussion about whether we should do it or not. And I took some time and I talked to some mentors and I got some good advice. And at the end of the day, I basically said, sorry guys, I'm walking. I took my script, I took my crew, and we walked away. And equitism has been on the shelf a bit since that point. So I wanna show you guys the hard times. I wanna tell you about them and be honest. Um, this actress left a very uh, scathing uh, comment on our, um, on, our, on our Kickstarter page. And I'm gonna let you guys read that in a little bit. But this was just throughout the campaign, you're gonna have hard things happen like that. 
And so uh, I posted one of these posts because this is when our $1,000 backer producer pulled out and I chipped my tooth on the same day. I was having a really hard day. And so, you know what? I just posted a post from the heart. These are my sisters. And I was just saying, thanks guys for, for being there. So don't give up, um, even though the hard times come. And, uh, and like I said, I think out of all the reviews, we had one, one really bad scathing comment and all the rest were good. So just like on any other program, you're gonna get these, these really nasty comments. So I'm gonna read it to you guys because you know, you, the, the, the Kickstarter is up live. You can go check it out for yourself. But I don't want you to find this and have a bad taste in your mouth after. All right, here goes, guys. This is rough. Um, the, second, the second I met Brandon, he asked for my money. He, uh, I said I didn't want to donate in order to secure a role. So it wasn't until I earned the role of Saren did I actually donate. I stood by this project because it was a film about integrity and the respect between men and women. I gave up on this film because the immediate people, such as Brandon, have no clue what the word integrity means. And, and equitism was unfortunately my first experience in producing and realizing how difficult it is to work with men who have no respect for strong women. So that hurts. Because um, that's exactly what I was trying to do with this project. I found out through other actors that Brandon had emailed the entire cast and crew except for me stating I walked off the project, which was, un which was entirely untrue. I donated money. I received... $300 out of the 1,250 I was promised as an actor and lost out on a month of work because I devoted my time to help produce with no pay. Why did I volunteer to produce? Because I grew closer to this project I believed in. Brandon urged me to help out in any way that I could as I promised to do so. I kept my promise. Two weeks before production was to begin, I found out there was no hair and makeup team, no locations had been locked, no sets were built, uh, no rental studio equipment, had been set up and organized. No pre-production had been professionally executed, which again is a little frustrating to me because I had producers which were supposed to be doing that. So it was all kind of pointed at me. Why did Brandon tell everyone but me I was not on equitism? It's because I made the decision to, to walk away and leave from her. I communicated to him exactly how I felt about this work ethic, about his disregard for people's hard-earned money and time, about how he has so much to learn about not only directing but acting like a grown man with integrity. This is why I was cast as a role of Saren. I will not tolerate any kind of BS and I will speak my mind and stand up for what is right. Uh, this, to this day, Brandon has not responded back to me in any capacity. That's true. I'm, I, I don't want anything to do with her at this point. Um, after I left my comment last night, I was asked by Stephen Millette, who is another producer, uh, to remove my comment as they are finishing the trailer and I hope to produce. I was told I would eventually get my beautifully color corrected footage that I could further my career with as an actress because it is at least what I deserve. However, I went ahead and got a hold of my footage, paid to get color corrected and edited because you can imagine I have zero trust for Steven or Brandon. And then down here is just another little quick little uh, comment. I donated $500, where's my footage? Where's the painting? Where's the pin? Where's the due diligence? Brandon. I have emailed you nine times to ask you to give me my money in order to be a part of equitism. Such a shame. <sighs> All right. So there it is, guys. That is like the single biggest wart of the project. And, uh, you know, I could have gone here and tried to report, report this as spam or something, but I don't think it is spam. We had a genuinely uh, kind of a strong disagreement and um, we did not work well together. And, and I, you know, I tried to make it work, but there was a point where it came to a head. She and, and her, a tree, her little toxic trio of producers gave me the ultimatum to sign over the rights or they were gonna walk away from the project. That was the ultimatum they gave me. And I thought to myself, this is a perfect opportunity. And that is why I emailed everyone stating that they have walked off the project because I am not gonna sign this. So there you go. Every other comment on here is congratulations. Great, uh, great premise, you made it, congrats, oh my gosh. Uh, congrats, yes, and just a lot of positive love and really good stuff. So I just want to warn you guys that, you know, you're going to get some people that want to rain on your parade. And um, I know even, I don't want to go into anyone else's projects, but I know some people in film society have dealt with that as well on their own things. And, it, and it's tough, but you got to stick with it. Um, so that's, that's all I would encourage you to do. Anyway, guys, wrapping up here, uh, why is this a good place to do a Kickstarter here in the UK. All right, over here on the side, this is uh, 
This is where Kickstarter gets most of its money from the US, but the second biggest contributor is the United Kingdom. They say, uh, they say London is the Hollywood of the UK. This is just one of many links that you can go check out that has stats um, on Kickstarter, and I found this one particularly helpful. This just shows you the dates that the, the Kickstarters are most successful in, okay? So like I said, I would never do one in December, personally, uh, because it's a, people are spending their money on other things. And luckily, as you get into February and March, where our campaign is running through, you start to get up a little higher. Um, and actually, the biggest ones are May and November. So um, you can check that out as well for your own projects and when you're considering launching. And here at the university itself, you guys have over 20,000 students. And with 0.51 Productions, I think one of the reasons it's so pertinent here is 59% of the students are female and you have 150 nations from diverse backgrounds. This is one of the most diverse institutions in the world. So that's a really cool team uh, to go with. These are some stats, I won't go to them, on the BFI about uh, female working, females working in the film industry, and it's very low, guys. It's, it's like 20% cast and crew women, stories about and by women. So that's why we're trying to create this production company, 0.51 um, Productions. And there's a little bit more on the roles here. Some of you guys who are interested in being a part of that Kickstarter, um, these are the kind of things you can do. I won't talk about them all, I'll just tell you the titles. Got campaign page editors, pre-visualization team, updaters, video team, PR and ad, legal team, events, cross promoters, reward team, business team. If you can get somebody to, to have a head of department in every one of those teams, which I think we do right now for our new uh, Kickstarter, you're looking pretty good. You know, you can share the load, it, it's a team effort. Um, and uh, yeah, what you get isn't exactly what, what you're gonna end up with because you have to pay the fees to Kickstarter at the end, you have to pay to make the rewards and to ship them out, and there's still taxes involved at the end of the year. Um, you have to claim that on your taxes. Okay, so that's it from me, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll share with you a little bit in a moment about more about 0.51 Productions, but does anyone have any questions about crowdfunding for their own projects? Yes. We've got some microphones coming your way. All right, cheers, thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, because um, your um, project, obviously, you played like closely with the um, the whole fact that you're kind of like trying to um, support the equality movement. Yes. Say, for example, you're just like kind of wanting to make a short horror film, a short thriller film, and you don't really have an overarching like aim to make a difference in an industry or something. Okay. How would you kind of think about getting all of those, like, because obviously a lot of the people that supported you was for the air quality reason and stuff like that. How could you kind of get those people on board even if your project's not directly linked to it? That's a great question. I mean, most of the projects I think that people do crowdfunding for are more genre-based. So you need to find your niche. You need to find the people that love uh, horror films, basically, and reach out to anyone that likes to watch those movies, that likes to make those movies. Do uh, check out similar projects that are about that. And just make sure you have something enticing. Like if you have a reel of horror projects that they can watch, I think the biggest thing for your campaign is going to be A, the video that's going to show them that you can do some really cool horror filming and then B, some really creative rewards that are linked to, to horror and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Sure, man. Anybody else? Yes. Hey, um, well, I've read countless times that Facebook ads are the number one way of raising money. Is that true? Because you can, you can chuck your whole bank account into Facebook. I wouldn't say number one, but I think it should be included in your... I think we spent at least $100 on Facebook ads. That's it. Because, you, well, with, with that campaign, yeah. Um, you, yeah, I mean, you don't want to go too crazy because <laughs> the thing with Facebook, which is nice, is you can, you can get very selective with your, with your audience, right? They, they allow you to select very specific details about what your audience likes, the kind of movies they're into, or the kind of things they like. So you can really target and cast a really good net. So depending on how much you're trying to raise, like for those projects that are, in, that are inventions that are raising over a million dollars, I'm sure they spend thousands on Facebook ads because I see them coming up. Oh, look at this new project, you know, was, was funded in one day, greatest invention, and it kind of teases you and you click on it. I see those all the time, but for, for a project that's personal, like Equitism, 
we were basically just trying to reach people in a radius around us in, in our area in LA, in, in uh, Cali, and then people that felt strongly about equality, people that felt strongly about the similar movies, you know, Hunger Games, that kind of thing. Um, and, I, and I just think we didn't, we didn't necessarily want to reach anyone outside of the US through Facebook ads because I think we would have had to put a lot more into it. So you've got to find what's worth it. Do you know how much you want to raise on this next campaign? Um, uh, for me, uh, it would be, yes, it's definitely the one to 10,000. If you're going for the one to 10,000 range, I think, I think around 100, 100 pounds on, on Facebook is, is- They keep asking for more. They're like, hey, we can do this for you. <laughs> But those are people that are, that, that's their job to get your money, right? Yeah. What you need are people that are on your team doing that work that Facebook does, but by posting and sharing. Facebook just puts an ad up. How many of the Facebook ads do you click on? Me. <laughs> many. Exactly. Yeah. If, it, if it pops up a couple times, that's, that's enough. The rest of the people are going to trust their friends that have shared it and, and people like that. So it's better to have a team of people that you trust rather than giving your money away to anyone, I would say. It's better to have a, a tight knit group. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Anything at all? I'll, I'll pull up our latest uh, Kickstarter really quick. And if you have any questions along the way, that's, that's totally cool. I just want to give you guys a quick little sneak peek because this is, this is our latest project. Kickstarter also allows you to share previews. So we've been building this. Um, actually, this has been a pretty quick uh, job that we've put together here. Um, only about a month or two in the works. But because I have had this experience, I put that all into uh, the team and stuff. And we can go to the preview link here. And OK, so there you go. So we're talking about women in film. This girl, Maggie, has just done these amazing illustrations for us. This is our like main picture. Um, the video is, is probably, I don't know. I'm still trying to get the quality to the, be the best it can be, but look at this logo done by uh, Michal Memum. Like this thing is sick. So we've got we've got a much better logo than before. Our audiences are women. So why are more stories being told by and for these fifty-one percent? It may seem like common sense, but we want to set that hard and fast rule, starting with ourselves, to prove it can be done that good stories can be told by men and women working together. We are going to guarantee that there are going to be 50% women working on our productions. In addition, one in every five members will be a diverse minority group. There are so many issues about representation out there, but let's start here. 2017 was a crucial year for women speaking out about injustice towards them in the entertainment industry. Time is up. We know what we want and we're going for it. We're going to be the first production company founded around true equality. We're focusing on empowering women, but all we're really doing is rebalancing the scales. The world is ready for a big change, and it is starting where it always has, with our storytelling. We need you to help make that change. And be the ones to tell your story. We're looking for cast, we're looking for crew, and we're looking to raise 15,000 in... Okay, so I'm not going to show you the whole thing. That will be live tomorrow. We talk about our timeline, um, but those graphics were all done. Um, by, uh, by Michal, he's just amazing. All, everything in there is custom, we have all the rights to it. Livon, who's in the house here, did the, uh, did the scoring for it. Very, very professional, that piano, and it just get, it kind of uh, conveys uh, you know, our, our positive message. So this is one thing we're trying to do. It's a bit of an experiment. We are having this commitment to having greater than or equal to 50% women on our cast and crew. And, um, you know, there's going to be some people who might not agree with that, but for us, it's, it's an important cause. So that's kind of the, the staple of what we're starting with. But as you saw with Equitism, we've got some exciting stories to tell along the way. So we talk about our goal. These were all custom drawn by, uh, by Maggie. We've got a graph here that we're going to talk about where the backers are coming from, male and female. This is the information I was telling you about on the BFI website about uh, women working in film right now. This is an even closer look at the different roles they're in, so it's a little bit graphical. And then we just talk about our values. We are writing this manifesto, which is kind of a fun thing, um, but Kickstarter is doing this limited promotion in January where you can make 100 limited rewards and be part of their Make 100. So we've got a calligrapher who's actually hand drawing the manifesto. This is just a really rough sample. 
we're going to have this kind of constitution looking a manifesto and we're going to frame them and send out a hundred of them, hopefully to uh, filmmakers who believe in the message. A little bit about our story there. Um, and then our cost breakdown, of course, we want to know where the money's going. Our timeline here, just so people can see what we're up to. And all this stuff is going to be updated as we go. Our first productions, of course, you all saw Equitism. That's kind of one thing we're going to be uh, carrying on. There's Maggie. And she helped us develop this new pin, which I think looks even cooler. We're going to remake those pins that I was talking about. And we've got some other uh, great things as well. Just, just little things that you can own for, you know, 10 to, to 20 pounds. And we talk a little bit about our team. There's a, there's a Meet the Rolls video here that also shows some of the different people that are on our team and uh, our stretch goals and, of course, our social media. So this is getting a little bit lengthy. Risks and challenges, I, I do share that story about what happened with Equitism. Um, Kickstarter's big on transparency. And, uh, and then we've just got all our rewards here on the side as well. So there you go. I mean, we threw that together in, in a month or two. So you guys can, you guys can achieve this. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take that much time. Uh, we'd love to have you be a part of this. We're going for 51-day campaign. Some of the CMP students uh, will be participating for credit. If anyone else wants to get involved, to have this to put on your resume, um, we're, we're, we're aiming to be successful again. And then we're looking to get cast and crew, as you heard in the video, to actually act in our movie, to be the crew on the movie, and to move forward with Point One Productions. We're also looking for your stories and your scripts to tell. Um, however, if they don't follow our manifesto, um, if they're like war movies or movies disrespecting women, we're not going to be doing that kind of stuff. So uh, just keep that in mind and uh, we hope you'll join us on it. I hope you've gained uh, some insight from this seminar. I'll be sticking around if you have any last minute questions or anything like that. But I just want to say thank you guys for uh, putting in the time and uh, really great to have you here. Thanks so much. Good luck with the horror thing, man. Send it my way, I'll share it. Yeah, we'll do. Okay, cool. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just a producer. And okay. I'm just trying to